on how it's made. Outboard motors. Vroom to maneuver. Generally smaller than their inboard counterparts, outboard marine motors come in a variety of sizes and horsepower, ranging from single-cylinder configurations to powerful eight-cylinder models. They can run on gas, diesel, or electricity, and they can be used for anything from a quiet day of fishing to an exhilarating offshore drag race. An outboard motor has an engine on top and a gear case below. This aluminum engine block is the skeleton that houses the cylinders, the heart of the engine's internal combustion system. Under a stream of cutting fluid, machines hone the cylinders to precise dimensions. They carve minuscule X's into the steel that lines the cylinder walls. Oil will settle into these X's, keeping the walls well lubricated for the piston moving within. Workers assemble each piston manually. First, they build a ridged bearing. They insert it into the loop at the end of a connecting rod. Then they fit the rod into a piston head, securing it with a pin. They place one piston in each cylinder. Then they lower in the engine's crankshaft and connect it to the loops at the ends of the connecting rods. Workers lubricate the crankshaft's bearings and cap them. Then they close up this part of the engine with an aluminum cover. To get the cover's positioning just right, they drive the first bolt manually. Then a precision torque wrench does the rest. Now they close up the top of the cylinders. They mount a flywheel on a magneto system on top of the crankshaft. As it spins, it generates electricity for the engine's electronics and pumps. Meanwhile, on another assembly line, the gear case takes shape. This machine locks the case's forward gear to a shaft that'll turn the motor's propeller. The propeller shaft connects to this, the lower drive shaft. The factory buys it ready-made from a supplier, but still has to refine the dimensions so that everything fits together perfectly. This machine analyzes the shaft. It concludes that this one needs to be 0.25 millimeters longer, so workers add the required number of steel discs, called shims. They insert this shimmed lower drive shaft into the gear case, then insert the propeller shaft with the forward gear. Now the gear case is linked to the drive shaft, which connects to the propeller shaft, which turns the propeller. Workers take the middle section of the outboard motor, the part in between the engine and gear case. First, they attach the gear case, which has since been fitted with a shift rod for switching gears and an upper drive shaft to transfer power from the engine to the propeller. They coat the unit with paint that's specially formulated to be resistant to salt water. When the paint's dry, workers bolt the engine on top. They plug the engine into a master computer. It automatically uploads the operating system into the engine's internal computer. Then, using a scanner, they input information about each cylinder. The motor is now fully operational. Workers insert a propeller onto the propeller shaft, then lower the motor into a test tank. This factory tests each and every motor it produces. They run the engine for about 10 minutes while a computer analyzes the performance data. After drying the engine thoroughly, workers apply the finishing touches, starting with a two-part cover that encases the lower portion. Then they latch another cover over the engine. and stick on decals. 
Both covers are made of heavy-duty plastic, coated in paint that won't fade despite extreme exposure to sun, wind, and water.